The latest flagship chipsets from MediaTek and Qualcomm are finally here and today we'll be putting them up against their predecessor chips as well as the best offering from Apple in four different benchmark runs where we will test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. The iPhone is the only one here with two main cores and has the highest core clock speed. The new Dimensity 9300 chip is the only one with four main cores, but only one of its four main cores is clocked at 3.25 gigahertz. The new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 also has a new stacked layout, but it too has a slightly lower main core clock speed when compared to the 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. All the Androids are using LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, while the iPhone sticks to LPDDR5 RAM and NVMe storage. All of them have LTPO displays except for the Xiaomi, which uses adaptive sync. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes if available. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme and 3D Mark Solar Bay and in between each benchmark we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. How much better are the new Dimensity and Snapdragon chips in terms of efficiency and performance when compared to their predecessors and can they keep up with Apple's latest offering? This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things started, we're going to be checking out their battery percentages at the start of the test. We'll compare this at the end of the test, but the Vivo actually has the largest battery and the iPhone has the smallest. We'll be using an infrared heat gun over here with an emissivity level of 0.5 to test out their temperatures between each benchmark run. And we're sitting at a room temperature of around 23 degrees in Celsius. Now, the temps at the start don't really matter since they've just been sitting idle, but it is worth noting that the iQ12 with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has the hottest idle sitting temperature at over 40 degrees Celsius, which is not a good start to this test. Now the first test that we're going to be running here is of course Antutu version 10, which is now out of beta stages. And I love the new Antutu version because they have changed quite a few things up. Firstly, we have CPU, which has now been optimized to support more multi-core parallel processing. GPU is now based on Unreal Engine 4 with two new 3D test scenes. This is one of them, that being called a high stress test known as Seasons. And there's also Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs, but none of these devices have ordinary GPUs since they are all using flagship level GPUs, integrated GPUs that is, within their flagship level chipsets. That being the Immortalis G720 MC12 GPU found inside the Dimensity 9300 in the Vivo X100 Pro, the Immortalis G715 inside the Xiaomi 13T Pro, which is running a predecessor version of the 9300, that being the 9200 Plus, which is actually an overclocked version of the vanilla 9200. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has the new Adreno 750 GPU, which is quite a bit better than the Adreno 740 GPU, GPU found inside the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 which we have in the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra here but it is worth noting that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 variant inside the S23 Ultra is actually an overclocked variant with a main core clock speed of 3.36 gigahertz which is actually higher a higher core clock speed when compared to both MediaTek chips and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And of course, the A17 Pro is using Apple's new six core GPU. Now, all of these chipsets have GPU hardware accelerated ray tracing, and the MediaTek 9300 is on its second generation version of it, while the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is now using global illumination, paired alongside its new hardware ray tracing version. Now, all of them are impressive in terms of GPU and CPU, and I like the way that things are stacked, especially for the new MediaTek and Snapdragon chip. Now, the old Snapdragon chip, that being the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, actually had a very different stack. It had one main core, two performance cores, then another two performance cores running at the same speed, but with a lesser core, that being a Cortex A710 as opposed to a Cortex A715, and then three efficiency cores. While the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has less efficiency cores, now only two efficiency cores, and more performance cores, that being five, but sticks to the same one main core with the Cortex X4 running at the helm. Now, the impressive thing about the Dimensity 9300 is that it is actually running four Cortex X4 cores, as opposed to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3's single Cortex X4, but it is split up in between 
two portions, that being one core clock at 3.25 gigahertz and then three at the 285 gigahertz. And it also has four performance cores with absolutely no efficiency cores. So we've gone through Antutu version 10 and we've also gone through Geekbench version six over here. And after Geekbench version six, it looks like there is some serious throttling happening with the Xiaomi 13 T Pro and the iQ 12, one with the Dimensity chip and one with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip. So that is a bit alarming. Now, if it does dip a little bit in terms of temperature, then yes, it might be throttling, but not necessarily. If there's a big drop, it's definitely throttling. And I did notice that with the Xiaomi and the iQ over here, they're having some pretty massive drops in order to keep their phones cooler. By doing that, they are throttling heavily, which means there will be a lack of performance. Now, this only happened within Geekbench and the 3D Mark tests over here because it got throttled so heavy since it increased its temperature so much after Antutu. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the scores over here. Now we're gonna be jumping into another version of 3D Mark. Well, a section within 3D Mark known as Solar Bay after Wildlife Extreme. And after Wildlife Extreme, the iQ12 is the hottest once again. The S23 Ultra dipped a little bit in terms of temperature and the iPhone worked the hardest adding the most in terms of temperature gain. Now, Solar Bay is all about ray tracing and the Pixel, which is why it's not included here, does not support ray tracing since it doesn't support the Vulcan needed within it. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, maybe you can't compare iOS and Android devices because of different APIs being used, but they are cross-platform, especially in terms of 3D Mark over here, where you can compare the ray tracing scores between iOS and Android. So it'll be interesting to see how well they all perform with their hardware accelerated ray tracing systems built inside their integrated GPUs over here. They're all running very smoothly, even though the Xiaomi and iQ throttled. So I am pretty keen to see the scores of those two, especially in terms of frames per second, because it means that the more you play games, the more your phone is gonna get too hot, it's gonna wanna throttle, and you're gonna get less FPS in games. Now wrapping up temperature over here after Solar Bay was run, the Vivo X100 Pro added the most in terms of temperature gain and ended off the hottest, while the Samsung ended off the coolest, but the iPhone seemed to have throttled a bit. Well, not really, it only dropped by 1.6 degrees in Celsius. But in terms of overall temperature from start to finish, the Vivo was once again the hottest ending off at almost 60 degrees in Celsius and added almost 30 degrees in Celsius, which is insane. Nothing else came close to that. The iQ12 with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 actually added the least in terms of temperature, which is a really good sign since the 8 Gen 1 was overly hot. The 8 Gen 2 fixed things up quite a bit. Looks like the 8 Gen 3 is sticking with that trend. And the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra actually ended off the coolest. Now in terms of battery, the three phones in the middle all have the same capacity and the iQ12 dropped the most in terms of percentage drain, dropping by 16, and had the worst 25 milliamp hour per minute, while the Samsung dropped by the least percentage, but the iPhone had the best milliamp hour per minute drain since it has the smallest battery of the lot. The Dimensity 9300 wasn't too far off the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in terms of terrible efficiency here though, something I really didn't expect from these two devices, but I will be doing a detailed battery drain test soon, so be sure to stay tuned for that one. Now in terms of Antutu results, we have finally hit that mark of a score of 2 million, and we see that from the Vivo and the iQ running the latest from Qualcomm and the latest from MediaTek. With the one from MediaTek, that being the Dimensity 9300, slightly edging past the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 found inside the iQ12. So that's first and second place with the best and second best of pretty much everything here. The iPhone though got the best user experience but placed in fifth. Fourth was the Samsung and right in the middle is the Xiaomi. Now due to that temperature drop and throttling that we saw earlier, the Xiaomi and iQ did not get good scores here. We're talking about a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with a single core score within Geekbench version 6 of 756, which is less than half of its predecessor's chip and even worse than the Dimensity 9200 Plus, which launched last year. So it is very disappointing to see, but when I reviewed the phone, 
we got a score of what seems to be higher than that seen inside the Vivo X100 Pro, which is the Dimensity 9300, but that plays second over here, so we have to give it to it. The iPhone placed first, quite a bit better still compared to all of these devices in terms of single core, and in the middle is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now, when it comes to multi-core, we had the exact same issues in terms of throttling from the Xiaomi and the iQ, so no surprise to see their scores dip down a bit, but when I reviewed the iQ 12, I got 6,894 multi-core score points, which is actually not quite as good as the Vivos with the Dimensity 9300, and it cleared over 7,000, which is actually first place here, putting it above the iPhone for the first time I have ever seen in terms of Geekbench. Once again, slap bang in the middle is the Samsung. Now, when it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, this test renders at 4K, so it is quite demanding. Again, because of Antutu, it trickled onto throttling the Xiaomi and the iQ, so the test results weren't the best. The Vivo was significantly better than that of the iPhone, which I was very surprised to see, with an average FPS of over 27 as opposed to just over 21 on the iPhone. But it's pretty interesting to see that the Samsung, being quite a lot older than the iPhone, scored almost identically to it. Now getting to those ray tracing scores, looking at 3D Mark Solar Bay over here, first place again gets awarded to the Vivo X100 Pro thanks to that new MediaTek chip. It got a max FPS of 91, which is insane, and an average of almost 29, which is once again a ton better than the iPhone's average of almost 23 FPS. Third was once again the Samsung and the Xiaomi and iQ once again throttled, so scores were less than impressive here. So in terms of this test and this test alone, the Vivo X100 Pro got the most first place scores here, with the iPhone not too far behind it, but I say this test because I know that the Snapdragon HN3 can perform better than this, it's just disappointing to see that it is causing throttling issues and it is overheating in a phone such as an iQ 12. I can only hope that this improves with other phones that the chipset is placed in going forward, so be sure to stick around for that one. I hope that you guys all enjoyed watching this video as much as I did trying to keep things as cool as I possibly could throughout this test. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.